Hello, LinkedIn Live, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Periscope, and of course, the ever-wonderful Twitch. My name is Frank Lavinia, and I am not only the host of Data Driven Impact Quantum, but I also started a little website 25 years ago this month called franksworld.com and um in case you're wondering uh i am a data scientist and ai engineer at microsoft and i am here on linkedin live to celebrate uh, the fact that my site my humble site turns 25 years old this month if it were a child it would be um hopefully graduated from college and um, be able to rent a car now. <laughs> um, yeah. So a uh, couple things I want to talk, but you probably noticed if you follow me on LinkedIn, um, a lot of the posts lately have been celebrating this. I'm going to celebrate the whole month. Uh, I think the actual date is actually the actual date uh, that I first uploaded the, the files to the site would be October 13th. And, um, Let's let's go back on the Wayback Machine. Machine. Here we go. I'll share my screen. Let's see if we can get that working. So, fun fact: the um, the site was actually um, started on October 13th, 1995, but I didn't get my own custom domain until uh, the first anniversary of the site because I figured, well, you know what? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm using it and it seems to get in some traction. So um, let's take a look at um, when the first um, thing on the Internet Archive finds my site. And you all can laugh at the primitive HTML and primitive designs. First off, I want to say thank you if you're watching this. Thank you for spending some of your Friday afternoon with me. Um, all right, so the first... Oh, 1996. There is indeed, ladies and gentlemen, an entry from 1996. So December 21st, 1996. I actually haven't looked at this in a long time, so I'm probably going to be equally embarrassed by what we find. So let's take a look. All right, so it's 7 uh, a.m. Let's see what the site looked like. All right, so first off, right away, you'll notice it has nothing to do with data science, software engineering, quantum computing, or at all. My original vision for the site was to be kind of like an, an a, a entertainment destination or an online amusement park, as you see. And I actually had, um, if you look here, um, this page was really most of the content on the site. Let me put it this way. Let me start that over. Most of the content on the site was really here, 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 and here. The actual, the actual um, homepage was just kind of an afterthought because registering a domain name back then was and getting a site plan was not cheap. So rather than to kind of register the domains and kind of get the other, uh, its own uh, site um, was rather, uh, exper it was expensive. So, uh, <laughs> so I just did this. Um, so I actually had a magazine or a zine. I had, uh, this was originally was the uh, foundation of Frank's world was kind of a weekly world news style of experience. Oh, could it be? Could it be? Oh, my God, this is awesome. This is, um, they actually did, uh, this is actually what the original site looked like. Holy cow. Two captures. So this goes back to November. Two captures. Let's see. So this is actually closer to what the original version looked like. See, no, 1999, 1996. All right, so November. 
So this actually was, this is actually a lot closer to what the first uploaded version looked like. Uh, it's from uh, November 1996. Um, probably about the same time that I uploaded the, um, that I registered the domain name. So originally, this was meant, Frank's World was going to be kind of a destination site. So there were going to be different kind of aspects to the site. Um, there was the, um, you know, one for the game I was working on. There was one for Mac users because back in the day, I was a big Mac user. Um, Tales from the Help Desk. At the time, I was just fresh off of uh, a multi-year gig on a, um, on a help desk for a Wall Street Bank. Uh, where I worked specialized help desk, um, sometimes tier one, sometimes tier three. Um, uh, schnauzer space, I had a miniature schnauzer at the time. And um, I created a site because everybody and their dog at the time had a website. And part of it, part of my goal was to make it kind of a website that is looks a bit different than your average dog site. Um, uh and then this here. So this here was the original vision for Frank's World. Uh, was, uh, yep, all the crap that's fit the post. And um, this was kind of um, the original uh, purpose of the site. <laughs> Originally was to be a weekly world news style uh, parody site. And, um, the, the origin of this, the, uh, the origin story, if you will, would be effectively, actually there's three captures on this, right? Um, the, the origin of this was the notion of Frank's world does borrow from the term Wayne's world, uh, which at the time, and when I was a freshman in college, would had just recently been released as a movie. And I had a rather... I was a freshman in college. I had a rather series of bad roommates. Uh, the first one left and I had my own place. He was just a complete, utter sociopath. The second one was a much more passive aggressive <laughs> sociopath. Um, and uh, for some reason, he would always post kind of obnoxious. Well, obnoxious is a strong word, but but really kind of motivational stuff on the door. And so I just posted kind of like a tabloid style thing. I think I had just gotten a copy of um, Aldous PageMaker, uh, which if you're not familiar, it was uh, basically kind of like a, a desktop publishing software. So one of the templates was called tabloid. And I thought that, well, that'd be pretty funny. And, um, I just started setting up kind of something that looked a bit like the weekly world news on the site and uh, on the web, uh, not the web page. And um, so ultimately I started doing this kind of uh, maybe not weekly, but every once in a while I post like ridiculous stories. Um, you know, let's see this one. Uh, is this still around? Something like this. It was kind of like uh, this. I think the original three stories were Bruce Lee was not did not actually die. He was frozen and, and kept in stasis until by the government until the economy improved. Uh, props to you if you know that movie that's from. Post it in the comments. Uh, it's actually from an '80s movie. Uh, another one was Bigfoot is actually alive and living in Westchester County. Um, at the time I was in college in the Bronx. So Westchester County was like right across thing. Another one was, um, another story ha was that Elvis actually lives in, in a, and work in Jersey city and works at a convenience store in Jersey city. Um, that was kind of it. It was just kind of like fake news, but not, not in the modern sense of the fake news. It's kind of like ridiculous stuff. Uh, Thomas Freiheit was a common fake name I used here. That was based on a guy I knew in college. Um, his nickname was Tommy Freedom. Freiheit is German for freedom. Um, so yeah, so that, that basically was Frank's world. Here's another one I did. I came up with kind of crazy stuff. They're just random stuff while I was taking the train or 
walking across New York or, or whatever. Um, Disney's newest attraction, um, sign of the times, say leading experts, uh, would be conspiracy land. Uh, there would be, um, <laughs> a moonshot studio where the Apollo landings were allegedly filmed. Um, uh, Kennedy assassination, uh, Dealey Plaza, and a UFO show every night. This actually would be a lot of fun, actually. Uh, UFO, uh, UFO show above the Bach underground secret base while Elvis sings a duet with Bigfoot on stage below. Yeah, that actually would be fun. I'd, I would pay real money to go see that. And of course, in the mid-90s, the big story was um, OJ. But I'm getting ahead of myself, and you can tell I totally haven't had uh, caffeine. Um, <laughs> enough caffeine today. Um, so there are really two announcements I wanted to make. One was that I'm going to celebrate the uh, with posts and live stream, talk about the history of not just Frank's World, but the web in general. Um, there's some interesting side stories that kind of go with Frank's World. So I'm going to have a limited uh, 12, um, I'm not 12, 25 episode uh, kind of mini podcast series about the history of the site. Still working on the logistics, but I'm definitely going to launch it soon. Uh, uh, I was going to make the content of this for part of that, but I am nowhere near coherent enough <laughs> in this to really do that. Uh, I probably should cr- write out kind of a script and kind of a story of what I want to uh, what I want to talk about. Uh, but ultimately, this was a great way to kind of get get web design skills so let's um if you look this was all hand coded with uh with bb edit i think was it was just a text editor on the mac and i had photoshop on the mac and you know i would do lots of silly stuff let's see what i did for the oj story so getting back to um kind of the 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 history of the site so this ultimately for just a little piece of paper that was you know, scotch tape to the door, this, that little like tabloid thing I did caused so much grief and havoc for the, my, my then roommate that it was just too good not to keep up. Let me put it that way. So I ended up, um, you know, posting a couple of times. It, it caused a lot of drama, a lot of drama. So one of the things I'm trying to dig up is I wrote a flash kind of movie, uh, in 1999. So or 2000 ish, uh, for the fifth anniversary of uh, Frank's World, uh, called Episode One: The Roommate Menace, kind of going into the origins of of the site and stuff like that. But ultimately, uh, a lot of this was, um, uh, you know, it was just a joke. It was just a thing. After the after freshman year, I got a new roommate. The drama kind of subsided, um, you know. So. So when the when the when the chance came to have a website, you know, because everybody was getting their own website and stuff like that, this was 1995. Um, I really struggled with what I was going to call it. I didn't know what to call it, so I kind of thought about, well, you know, I kind of want to do a kind of weekly world news thing, but online, because at the time, I don't think the weekly world news had a website. Like it was that long ago. So I thought, well, I'll bring back Frank's World. Turns out franksworld.com, a lot of domain names, um, if you think that the domain name situation was nowhere near as desperate as it was today, as it is today, but um, back then it was definitely uh, one of those things that, you know, I, I just wanted to register one domain name. So what would it be? What could I house all this crazy stuff under? And immediately I thought back to, you know, four years prior in 1991, um, Frank's World. And... Um, Ever since then, it's that's been uh, the rest, as they say, is history. Um, so let's check out the O.J. Simpson story. So a lot of the graphics are gone, which is truly a tragedy. Um, let's see. I basically... Uh, <laughs> the Unabomber. O.J., that was going on the thesis that uh, O.J. was innocent, but... Um, um, the Unabomber, Barney, Bigfoot, um, and Twister. Give me a break. I just saw the movie. That's funny. All right. So so when I started that, I, 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 had, I had a lot of fun with that. But then I thought about other websites. So I was noticing that 
well, first off, this was uh, all related to work. And if I think this should still work, because there were no images in this. Oh. Nope, nope, nope. So this was kind of like a Mad Libs type thing where you would enter, um, you would enter, you would basically kind of enter different stories and it would basically kind of come up with mock tickets. It was fun. This is my first attempt at an online game. Schnauzer Space. So let me give you the background for this before I show it. I'll, I'll kick it off because I have no idea how much of the images are captured and how much are not. So I had a miniature Schnauzer and at a lot of the, at the time, there were a lot of sites devoted to dogs. And to be quite honest, they were rather lame. So I wanted to come up with like a Hollywood style, really push the cutting edge of what I knew graphically and what was possible on the web. I use Shockwave um, um, Macromedia Director, Shockwave Director. I used uh, Flash on this before Flash was a was a bad word. You know, was really the only way to do animation online. Um, so let's see what we got here. This is probably this is one of the earliest uh, versions of it. So I ultimately, oh yeah, that's right. I won a couple of awards with this too. Um, yeah. So what I actually ended up doing was this in the spring. This site was created. So Frank's World uh, was started in. Um, probably it was, no, not probably. Boy, do I need coffee. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm totally, I'm totally bombing, right? Um, so ultimately, Frank's World started in October, and sometime in the spring, I created Schnauzer Space. It's kind of like the first, it was the second site I created. Um, so at the time, I think the te Tom Cruise movie, uh, Mission Impossible, was out. So I created a, a parody movie complete with animation and stuff like that called um, uh, Mission Unsniffable. So this used to be an animated GIF that would simulate like a paw print scan. And then this would kind of do like a mission briefing of like what's going on. And this is back when people would show off like how their site was made. I'm impressed at the amount of detail that the Wayback Machine has captured. As soon as I say that, that's okay. I have some of these in some zip file somewhere. Yeah, and this was my attempt to create a breadcrumb back to the top of the site. And I had to do this manually back in the day. There were no tools really to speak of. No affordable tools. Actually, there were no tools at this point. What? All right, let's go back to what the official machine was. Down on the official machine. All right, let's try this again. It's world. All right, so while that loads, this is what Frank's world looks like today. This is actually a really cool story. It's about the um, the smart narrative um, tool in uh, in uh, Power BI. It's really cool. So that's what the site looks like today. This is what the site would have looked like in 1996. No, no schnauzer space. Let's see. Let's go forward in time a little bit. Oh yeah, Schnauzer Space didn't launch. Oh come on. So let's jump in time. Let's jump forward in time for a little bit. Let's go to uh Let's see what things looked like in nineteen ninety-nine. Height of the dot com rush. Yep, I was still going with the um, entertainment network thing. So at this point, I added uh, Scrape Magazine, uh, a, a site about prank phone calls, a gaming company I was attempting to start, a game I was attempting to write, 
Um, let's see what the Schnauzers were up to in 1999. All right, so this was actually the first redesign of the Schnauzer space uh, because the original dog had died. So the first one was really meant for a, um, yeah, here she is. She died, princess. So this was the second one I had. Um, you know, I started the site and she died pretty recently after, which was kind of sad. Um, another dog I had, had, you know, so I redesigned the site to kind of fit the personality of the dog. And at this point, based on what I'm seeing in the design, I'm pretty sure that I had, well, I was using Dreamweaver by this point. Yeah. 99, I was using Dreamweaver for sure. Um, let's see if we can get some of those parody movies. Yeah, you can tell I had some plugins in Photoshop at this point. I my Photoshop skills had gotten better. Um, oh yeah, I love my Schnauzer. I have some I saw this on TV and I was like, "Holy cow!" Oh yeah, and Bob Dole had a um, had a miniature Schnauzer as well. Um, let's see the movie vault. What's in the movie vault? Oh yeah, Starship Schnauzers. This was meant to be a a a, a parody of all those like um, Christmas movies where somebody saves Santa. Blah blah blah. Pooch check first contact. Uh, Jean Luc Barkhard. Some of these puns are pretty bad. There's Mission Unsniffable. Let's see what we got. Oh, there's the GIF. Nice. So keep in mind, in, in, in 1995 technology, this that GIF would not have loaded that fast. <laughs> Let's see. And if I remember right, I had like this whole thing where the Mission Impossible logo would explode. Let's see if it'll work. Oh, there it is. Look at the GIF. Oh, it's a frame. Oh, who remembers frames? Let me know in the comments if you remember frames and frame sets. What the disaster that was. I really should save all this stuff out. So there's the font. There's the puppy JP I had. Jack. Uh, proceed to the next level. So what's pretty funny about this is I actually had uh, VRML. You may not remember VRML. What is that? Self-destruct DCR. Oh, that's that. Yeah, that's the Macromedia Director file. So that actually will have a... Uh, it will actually play... Um an audio file saying this website will self-destruct in five seconds or something like that. That is so cool. I totally forgot about that. This is fun. Briefing. Keep in mind back at the time, <laughs> pinky in the brain, this was actually a 3d rendering program. I was playing around with at the time. So you can always tell I was doing, always doing some creative crazy stuff like this. But uh, at the time, doing this type of, let's see if we can look at the source code, uh, writing this type of code and this type of formatting was very much proprietary only to Netscape. In fact, if you look, you'll see that I had the, um, the font tag um, to create this, the background colors. This is, at this point, well, okay, in 1999, style sheets existed, but I think only Internet Explorer 3 and up had supported it. Um, but when this was written, this would have been written in 1995. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. See, I'm making it about tech and his tech history here. Um, so there were actually, I wasn't on this one, but I actually did have a v VRML, which is, stands for virtual reality modeling language, which was kind of a, an HTML type thing. It was really cool. I had, um, this was a parody of First Contact. I remember this one. I had a lot of fun with that one. So you see it look kind of looks like the Star Trek uh, interface of stuff. Photoshop. I think this is uh, basically a parody of, um, what was the movie? Not the movie. Uh, 101 Dalmatians movie. Live action movie. See, Disney's been making live action remakes for, for decades now. 
Yeah, so this is the Schnauzer Prize. Um, uh, true dossiers. Barcard. Commander Wolf. <laughs> Man, I had a lot of fun with Photoshop. A lot of fun with Photoshop. So anyway, that's what it looked like back in the day. Let's see what we... Uh, let's see what it looked like when I made the switch to blogging. Which would have been around... Well, let's, move, let's jump ahead to 2001. Jump ahead two years. It's like time travel. Blew up. Surfer refused stream. Well, in any case, that's enough going down memory lane. The next thing I want to show is Humble Bundle. If you're not familiar with it, humblebundle.com, they have a great deal on data and AI books. Um, it plus, it supports a charity. So if you're not familiar with Humble, Humble Bundle, most of their stuff is game-related. Steam kind of purchases and stuff like that. But every once in a while, they will have a book deal uh, or a software deal. Uh, so for instance, there's a Learn to Code um, bundle. Uh, but this here is the data and AI bundle. You get $1 gets you these five books. Oops. One dollar gets you these five books. I've read this one. This is a really good one. Um, this one is was on my list anyway to get. So um, eight dollars gets you, in addition to these books too, automated ML in Azure. Ooh. Um, Fifteen dollars will get you um, these books. So for fifteen dollars, you get a number of books. Uh, looks like in this case, uh, fifteen dollars will get you fifteen books. Which, if you try to buy these independently, you know that's a bargain. Uh, they're in uh, Mobi, EPUB, and uh, PDF format. The charity source Code for America. Code for America does a lot of good work with civic tech and whatnot. Um, highly recommend it. You can pay with Alipay, Amazon, PayPal, or credit card. Totally check it out. It's totally worth it. And um, so. Now, there's one more thing I want to talk about. So if you've listened to the podcast, Data Driven, or even to a lesser extent, um, Impact Quantum, because we haven't really talked about it yet. Although I would say that Impact Quantum has been... Um, Impact Quantum has been a huge part uh, I mean, has been basically a manifestation of everything that we've read. Andy and I have read and kind of consumed from uh, Grant Cardone and whatnot. So right now, Grant Cardone, and again, if you Google him, you're going to get some interesting search results. Um, let's see if I can share my screen again. Here's what the 10x rule means. Now, I don't want to confuse this 10x with the other type of 10x. When Grant Cardone says 10x. There was some guy a few years ago who had said something to the effect of what a 10x engineer was. I think he must have gotten the term, but ultimately, that's not what 10x was about. If you kind of read through the list, kind of like that 10x engineer was a bit of a sociopath, um, <laughs> for lack of a better term, and we've all worked with them. But here's the idea. You need to 10x your goals. And by doing that, it'll make you better. And you can achieve more. Now, what do I mean by that? What does Grant Cardone mean with that? First off, this comes from, just do a search for hashtag 10x. There's a lot of kind of junk there now. It automatically made a... There's the 10x rule, which is a great book. Right, written by Grant Cardin. His wife, Elena Cardone, actually wrote a book recently, really good, called Empire Building. She's got a second one in the works. Also, check that out, too. Um, but I basically read almost everything he's written. 
um, <laughs> uh, or listen to because the his audiobooks are on fire because the guy is intense. I mean, this guy is cranked not just to eleven, but to like two thousand eleven. Like that's that's how the guy this guy's cranked. Interesting life story. He tells it better than I do. But ultimately, here's the thing: if you have a goal, say this is you, right? You have a goal. You want to get this. You will inevitably to get the, to get anything right it always takes 10 times the effort to do something i mean sometimes just going to the store <laughs> just takes 10 times uh, the effort so, so the 10x rule is basically if you make your goals bigger right so for in this case and i'll, I'll tell you the story that 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 really resonated with me uh, cuz he also has two kids and 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 that's it. So if you do say this is a pile of gold, right? Well, that's a bad example because gold is valuable anyway. All right. So the, say that's your goal. So you want to make your goals like big and monstrous, right? And the goal, right? This could be anything, right? I'm just using gold because every, everybody likes gold, right? <laughs> Uh, let me tell you the, the example that he, that he gave is that, that, that resonated with me. I think it was in either the book or one of his podcasts or live streams um, is the idea that if you were just headed to the store, right? And I don't pick jelly beans, pick jelly beans for instance, right? I mean, for me, I can take them or leave them. I eat keto now, so I wouldn't have them at all, right? It's something you, you, if you have a goal, your goal is to go to the store and get jelly beans, right? You know, you get in the car, car won't start, well, you're done, right? That's pretty much ends it, right? Any traffic you hit, any road bumps, whatever, you're just going to be like not really motivated to get to the store. Now, that sounds obvious. But here's the part that's maybe obvious, but for me, it wasn't obvious. Um, let's say the store had a pharmacy and life-saving medicine for your child, right? You start the car, it doesn't work. You know, I'm, I'm walking, you know what I mean? I, and if there's a bear on the way, I'm going to pick up a big stick and chase the bear away or stab the bear, right? Whatever it comes, because the stakes are that much higher, whatever comes in my way, whatever obstacles come in my way, I don't care because my goal is that much more important to me. And ultimately, I think 10X, the way he phrases it in, 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 this, in this book is, or just in general, the 10X rule is that if you have a goal, and everyone says they have goals, everyone you know makes New Year's resolutions, blah, blah, blah. I want to lose weight. I want to do this. I want to make more money. I want to do this. Um, everyone has that, but are those go those goals don't excite you? And your goals, if your goals don't excite you, the first obstacle you hit, it's like those jelly beans. Like, eh, I could take them or leave them, right? But if you have a goal of getting life saving medicine, or you know, feeding the hungry, or teaching children how to read, or uh, you know, achieving something that really means something to you, whether it's monetary, whether it's being a better person, whether it's being a better parent, anything really. And you make it big enough and bold enough. You're going to start coming up with creative strategies to get around that problem. Whether it's, you know, walking to the store instead of that, or, uh, you know, hot wiring the car. If you can't find keys to the car, I, I don't know, whatever, whatever you want to do for the analogy. So the idea is if you make the target bigger, you're going to do more for it. So for all you for all you like physics geeks out there, right? Think about gravity, right? If everything in the everything that has mass in the universe has some kind of gravitational pull, right? So that's like say that's like the moon, right? Um but the earth let's see if I can draw like the earth with water and oceans and stuff, right? It has uh this is the earth that has six times the mass of this. Because it has six times the, the size, six times the mass, the, it's going to create a gravity that's six times stronger.
right? Because it's bigger. The sun I honestly don't know how much more mass sun is. I know it's we're a little dot. Like Earth would be like this size of a dot, not as the sun, right? So this is the sun. I'll just go out and just say this is thousands of times bigger, right? Because it's is that bigger? That much bigger? It has that much more of, of a pull. Somebody's gonna correct me on this. I know that, but that's fine. Put it in the comments because I don't feel like shelling out to Wikipedia or whatever. But that's not the point. The point isn't the exact number. The point is is that because it's bigger, it has more pull. Goals are kind of the same way, right? Goals. If your goal is big enough, it creates its own gravity, which pulls you in, right? That's just an example, one metaphor, right? The other one that, that he, he gave out on the live stream the other day was, you know, if there was $350 million waiting for you six miles away, okay? But you had to walk barefoot, right? You would do it, right? Because it's quarter of a, it's the third of a billion dollars, right? And he said it was tax free, all that, all that, all that kind of qualifying stuff, right? If that was the case, you would walk over that. You would walk barefoot. You'd probably walk over glass. And somewhere in the live stream, people were saying like, "Oh no, no, no!" Like we would. Oh, I'm not sharing this. I am maximize that anyway. Um, you know that that's kind of the point is that if your goal is there, if, if the end goal is big enough, you'll overcome any obstacle, right? And that's kind of gets back to the 10 X rule here. Highly recommend the audiobook. Highly, highly, highly recommend the audiobook. If you go to the data driven book.com and you sign up with Audible, and that routes you to Audible. Um, and we get a uh, you get that one free book. You can make that your one free book and we'll get a commission that helps they're a sponsor of the show of Franksworld.com. Not Franksworld.com, but data driven, impact quantum, that sort of thing. Highly recommend it. Um if you read that or listen to that and you like that, he has a follow-up book called Be Obsessed. Or Be Average. That is also a good book. He kind of gets more into his personal story. And, you know, when I first listened to the 10X rule, it was in kind of a tough time in my life. It was four years ago. And um, I found myself, my job had moved to Seattle and I was basically getting laid off. And I was a Windows phone developer. Um, <laughs> Windows 8 applications and UWP, which nobody... I mean, it was not the job market for that is not was not healthy. Um, so I really kind of had to reboot and reinvent myself. And, you know, reading that book and understanding what goals are and making bigger goals, um, you know, is a big part of why I have now 70 certifications. And um, I got into data science. I got in fast and I got in hard into data science and started a podcast, started another podcast, changed the focus of my blog changed everything really uh, I even lost weight you know <laughs> so um, for me it was very impactful there were a lot of on it I left the 10x rule at the end of it kind of with a lot of questions and BF sister B average kind of addresses those so if you're watching Uncle G which is what fans of Grant Cardone call him uh, affectionately um, I am totally looking forward to your next book sir um, the world needs more Grant Cardone more of that motivation more of that can do spirit. So with that, I think I've been uh, streaming long enough to keep uh, LinkedIn happy. Uh, definitely check out the book. It is totally, totally, totally worth it. TheDataDrivenBook.com will route you to Audible, and you'll get a, um, a one free audio book on, on us at Data Driven. And uh, look for more history of Frank's world. And it's not going to be just about the site. It's not going to be showing you pictures of my, my schnauzer and stuff like that. I, I have been blessed in a lot of ways because of that site has, has opened up a lot of doors some good some weird um one of which was i almost got on the jenny jones show because of the site crazy right um i richard bay emailed me to complain about what i said 
which actually didn't say it. I quoted what somebody said about him. Um, let's see what else happened. A lot of <laughs> just strange, weird stuff. Uh, you know, when I lived overseas, I would post photos. I'd create photo albums and kind of put them on there. Kids, this is long before Facebook or Flickr. Um, it was really kind of a personal site and had some interesting stuff on there. And, you know, I switched to a blog format in 2004, focusing on getting being a Java developer, switching into .NET. And then obviously in the last uh, few years, it's become, you know, Frank's world of data science and AI, um, you know, with increasing levels of quantum content in there. Um, but that's it for me. I hope you have a great one. Thanks for uh, your time and attention and you have a great weekend.